So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over an AQA GCSE Maths Higher Topic Test around vectors. Now as always there'll be a copy of the test paper that we go through in this video for you to have an attempt at either while watching this video or before watching this video in the description below for you to click on. Now before we get started it's worth mentioning that vectors can appear on both the non-calculator and the calculator paper. So with regards to the questions that we're about to attempt now we will not use a calculator unless we desperately need to use it or to quicker the process. So looking at question one, it says use the diagram to answer questions one and two. The diagram shows three vectors, A, B and C. Write in column form the vector that is parallel to B, but twice as long as B. So just to get started now, there's a couple of ways in which you can do the following two questions. You can either use the diagram or you can use column vectors and it's entirely up to you which one you go for. Um, as long as you're getting the same answer, it's all good because both questions are only worth one mark. So you'll only get the mark for the correct answer. So if we look at vector A, then we can see that this has got a column vector of 2, 5. And for B, that has got a column vector of minus of 2, minus 2. And for C, that's got a column vector of minus 4 and minus 3. So with regards to the first question, we want it parallel to B, which means that we've got to use that vector of B, and we want it twice as long. So what we're doing is we're having a scalar of 2 against 2 and minus 2, which then becomes 4 and minus 4. Then for B, uh, for question two rather it says which of the following is true circle your answer so what you can do is you can use your column vectors to see which of these is true so if i just zoom out and watch everything disappear and so here if we look at b plus c that's going to be two minus two plus minus four minus three and if we simplify that we get minus two minus five which is not a so that's false. Then if we do a minus b, that's going to be 2, 5 minus 2 minus 2. And that's going to be 0 and 7. And that doesn't equal c, so that's going to be false. Then if we do a plus b plus c, we've got 2, 5 plus 2 minus 2 plus minus 4 minus 3 and we find that that does equal 0 0 so it does equal 0 so that one is true moving on to question 3 it says that two vectors p and q are shown on the grid write in letters any vector equal to 2p minus 4q now there's a couple of possible answers you can have for this you can either have yb zc a dash D or B dash E. Now 2P is basically going two squares to the right and minus 4Q is going down four squares. So you just need to make sure that it does fit on the grid. So one example would be starting at Y, we're going two squares to the right and four squares down and so therefore, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to end up there. So that will be one example of 2p minus 4q. The next question then says, draw on the diagram the vector representation of p minus 2q plus minus 2p plus q equals minus p plus q. So for this, there's a couple of different variations you can have. You've just got to make sure that it fits on the grid. So let's start with point M and let's go through the directions. So here minus P plus Q is equal to minus P minus Q. So if I go from M and go through that direction, I'm going to end up at minus P, which is going this way. And then minus Q is going to be here. Now, again, we've got a potential problem of see if this fits on the grid and I think it'll be okay this one fitting on so this here is minus p 
minus q. So then let's follow the directions of p minus 2q. So p, which is going to the right, and then minus 2q is going down 2. And then we're going to add minus p. So we're going minus 2p, which is this way, and then plus q, which is here. And so what we've got is we've got this situation here where this is my p minus 2q and this is my minus 2 plus q. Then moving on to question 4 it says work out the value of c so let's take out the column vectors so here we've got c plus 6 from 2 times 3 equals d and we've got 5 plus 2d equals 8. So then using this line here, what we've got, so let's just take that over here. So we've got 2d equals 3, so d equals 3 over 2 or 1.5. Then using c plus 6 equals d, we've got uh, c plus 6 equals 1.5. So what do we need to do? We need to minus 4.5. So c equals minus 4.5 or minus 9 over 2. Then we can write that as an answer. So minus 9 over 2 or minus 4.5. We can write it as minus 4.5 and that would be fine as well. Moving on to question 5. So this is looking at transformations. So it says work out transformation that maps A onto B. So what we're doing is making sure that you know which shape are you starting to from and which one are you going to so we're going from a to b so picking one point so let's go for this point here and i pick the corresponding point on the image and what i want to do is just do the column vector to get from the green dot to the blue dot so this is going to the right one two three four five six We've got six and then from there we're going down three so it's going to be six minus three then moving on to question six, it says triangle T is mapped to the triangle R by the translation of minus three, minus two. Draw tri triangle R on the grid. So we're going from, let me just make sure I've got that there. So we've got minus three, minus two. So if I pick one particular point, I'm going to go minus three, which is to the left three and down two. So that then becomes here. And if I do the same for all the other points, so three and then down two, and then pull that this one and then we're going across three down two and then all i then need to do is join those points up with a ruler which clearly i'm not doing and we label that triangle r again just make sure that you are taking a bit of pride in terms of your neatness and accuracy and that you are using a ruler again apologies for me not doing such that so looking at question seven it says that o a uh, o a b c is a quadrilateral l m n and r are midpoints of o a a b b c and o c respectively o a equals a o b equals b and o c equals c and it says work out the following vectors in terms of a b and c so to go from o to r now again there's going to be multiple routes in which we could do this now as you can see on the diagram although it's not drawn accurately which never is with, there's no labeling of any of the information that we've been given so it's a really good practice for us to label this on our diagram so o to a which is this direction here well that's going to be a so this is going to be half a let me just get rid of that arrow because it's going to be a little bit distracting make that a little bit bigger so i can actually read it that's going to be half a and this is also going to be a half a then look using the next bit of information ob so o to b is here so this is just going to be b whole line and o to c is going to be c so this is going to be a half c and this is also going to be half c so first first question is working out o to r well that's just going to be a half c then moving on to cn well, to go from C to N, we're keeping this on the screen, so let me just zoom out a little bit. So for this, C to N, the route, there's several routes to which I could go, because I want to work out what this here is going to be. 
Well, c to n is half of c to b. So if I then work out what c to b is and to work out c to b, I'm going to go c to o and plus o to b. Now that there is going to be minus c plus b. So if I half all of that, I get half minus a half c plus a half b. And there's my final answer. Now you'll notice I've not put underlines next to any of my letters. Again, that's although it, you should really do it, it's not essential. So if you, if you do forget, you should still get four marks as long as the coefficients of those vectors are the same. Moving on to the next one. So it says L to M. So I want to go from here to here. Now I know I know what one pot root is. So L to L to A is going to be half A, but I don't know what A to M is. So let's first of all work out what A to B is going to be. So A to B, I'm going to go from A to O plus O to B. So A to O is minus A and O to B is going to be just B. So then working out A to M, that's going to be a half of A to B. And so that's going to equal minus a half A plus a half B. So then from this, what I can then do is then work out what the final answer is going to be. So L to M, which not this is being C. So L to M is going to be L to A plus A to M. Now L to A is a half A and A to M, I've just worked out, is minus a half A plus a half B. Now one thing you should notice is that these two things here cancel out leaving me with a final answer of a positive half b. I don't know why I've written a. I'm looking at the previous line and so the final answer is a half b. Now if you wanted to use decimals you can do but personally I would stick with fractions. So then moving on to our next set of questions, question 8. It says that OACB is a parallelogram O to A is equal to A, O to B is equal to B, M is on O C such that O to M to M to C is in the ratio of 3 to 1. B M is extended to meet A C at N, write O M in terms of A and B. So again, a lot of waffle, but the nice thing compared to the previous question is that the vectors have been done for us. So let's have a look at working out this route. So we want to go from O to M, and O to M is basically three parts of four of O to C. So let's first of all work out what O to C is going to be. Now, because this is a parallelogram, if this length here is A, then this length here is also going to be A. And it's always worth making sure that you are right using the arrows because that's going to help as well. And likewise, if O to B is B, then A to C going from A to C is also going to be B. So from this, what we can then work out is O to M is going to be three out of four of O to C. So from this, let's work out what O to C is. So O to C is going to be O to B plus B to C. So O to B is B plus A. So I want to work out three quarters of B plus A. And that gives us an answer. You can either leave it like this or you could write it as three quarters B plus three quarters A. And if you've got those two things the other way around, again, that's absolutely fine as long as the signs of each of those uh, bits or terms are the same as correct sign. Next question then says work out B to M. So let's have a look at how we go from B to M. So it says that B to M meets at, well, let's go for, we'll go from B to M. Well, I can go change a different color. So for B, B to M, we'll go B to O plus O to M, which we've now recently found. Now B to O is minus B and O to M is three quarters B 
plus three quarters of a so then adding all of those things up what we get is our final answer which is three quarters of a minus one quarter of b now moving on to 8c it says given that uh, bm to mn is 3 to 1 show that a to c to n to c is in the ratio of 3 to 1 so let's have a look at doing this now if we go back to the diagram which is just there and let's just have a look now probably i'm gonna have to do this without using the diagram on the screen so let's just work this out so first of all let's work out each of those components so b to m is going to be three quarters of a minus one quarter of b and that equals three parts and where i've got that from is from there so therefore then m to n is going to equal one part so if i divide b to m by three times it by one equals let's just write that down so let's go for b to m divided by three multiplied by one that's going to equal one quarter of a minus one twelfth of b so from this then we can then work out let's just put a little break in there so let's now work out what a to c is what a to c we know is just b and let's then work out what n to c is going to be what n to c is going to be let's just go back to the diagram so n to c is going to be uh, well first thing we need to work out is what m to c is first so m to c is m to b plus b to c now m to b is minus three quarters a plus one quarter of b because we're going in the opposite direction and b to c is just a so needing all of this up we get one quarter of a plus one quarter of b so working out what n to c is going to be well n to c if we go back the n to c is going to be n to m and then m to c so it's going to be let's go back to that so it's n to m plus m to c now n to m we've worked out so we just reverse the signs of this so it's going to be minus a quarter a plus one twelfth of b and m to c is what we've just worked out which is here which is a quarter of a plus one quarter of b so then simplifying all of this these two things here cancel out so I've just got one twelfth of B plus one quarter of B, which equals one third of B. And there you can see that looking at this and this, if I just write N to C. So here we've got uh, the ratio of A to C equals B and N to C equals a third of b so therefore the ratio of a to c to n to c is going to be in the ratio of three to one